between 1900 and 1914, Africa was totally gone, dominated. Those who were benefiting from the material resources of the continent saw the need to take control of territories and they agreed among themselves to transform the continent into their property and they struggled to do so. But prior to that, the people who spoke about our liberation as a continent were the people from the diaspora who were enslaved, taken to foreign land and had to struggle three forms of struggle. One, against slavery. Two, because they became the majority in the Caribbean, they began the struggle for self-determination and independence. And because they were enslaved in America, because of the color of their skin, they were not recognized as human beings. They were also struggling for their rights to be recognized as human beings. Three struggles so that the African people will be regarded as a people. Yes, there is pain, but there is also joy that 1804, Haiti became a liberated nation. The African people in a foreign land were struggling for the right to self-determination and independence and they were able to achieve it. Not on the continent, which was heading toward domination, but in a foreign land that they made their own. Taking them as slaves and then they became free to be owners of land. But that was not the end of the struggle where those who were enslaved were also struggling in the United States. They were beginning to achieve their rights to be seen as human beings. But 1847, Liberia became independent. It was seen to be a land where the people in the United States who were enslaved and free could return to their homeland. It is important for us to understand the psyche of people of African origin who were taken to the diaspora. As they gained consciousness that they were Africans and began to get African identity, that's why Sylvester Williams organized the first Pan-African conference in London in 1900 when Africa was beginning to be completely dominated. For Africans in the diaspora, Africans from the continent, to begin to fight together. First, to have a common identity and struggle for their kind, not to be subjected to any form of exploitation and domination. That was the objective of the Pan-African struggle. With that struggle, we began to realize that it was not sufficient to struggle for rights in the United States and England, but the diaspora must struggle for an African continent that is united, a continent that could become their homeland. Because to them, they were removed from different parts of the continent. But then to return, they were already cut off from where they came from. They no longer knew which part of the continent they would return to. So the only meaningful return to them was to struggle for a continent that was united, that became their homeland, so that they would return to that continent. But they were also conscious that continent was gradually being balkanized and owned by the very foreign powers that controlled their destiny. So the Gavis and the Bois saw the need to move towards working together with Africans on the continent to struggle for our common liberation. That is where Pan-Africanism came into being. In 1919, Dua saw the need for a Pan-African Congress to be convened at a time when the world powers had engaged in a world war destroyed each other and sat in Versailles in order to determine how to get reparation from each other. 
but people of African descent knew that all they were there to do was to change the equation so that those who were defeated now will surrender their colonial territories to those who are the victors. And in doing so, they will continue to colonize us and dominate us and live at our expense. Therefore, they saw the need that at that conference, they will also hold a Congress to refuse for them to continue to achieve their goal of the collective domination or subjugation of the African people. And that is why they came up with their own chat and called for the League of Nations to have a trusteeship system where those countries that were colonized by the powers that were defeated will not be taken over wholesale by those who were the victors, but would gradually allow them to be on a participatory system where gradually they will attain the right to self-determination and independence. That was the work of the Pan-Africans. And that's why all these countries that were under the German domination went through a trusteeship system. The African people in the diaspora and Africans from the continent came to the realization that the African people will never earn dignity unless we unite and build a continent that can ensure that our self-determination will lead to self-reliance, that we are capable of managing our own affairs. That is why they were struggling for a united Africa, because they saw the need for a continental bank, because they have learned from defeated Europe, Europe engaged in the Second World War, devastated itself, crumbled, and had to go to beg for support from the United States that was not very much involved in the war. That's what we about the Marshall Plan. They told them, go and unite and come to us to beg. Then we'll be able to assist you. And that's where Europe developed a plan, an economic recovery program, where they saw how to link the European economies, have the European Investment Bank, create the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the World Bank, as well as the IMF. This we are that institution created for us and in our interest. It was for them and in their interest. And they started to assist each other in their trade. The World Bank will assist countries so that they can build the productive base of their economy, their energy systems, and have full self-sufficiency, while the IMF will give loan to some of them so that they can buy goods from the others so that they can trade with each other. Nkrumah told the African leaders that arising out of colonialism, we had no banking system that will give the resources we need to build our industries, to build our agricultural system. Therefore, we have to create those institutions ourselves. And balkanize will not be able to do that. But because each leader wanted to be a leader of a particular country so that you can be seen as the president of that country, they said that was a prestigious project and that was thrown aside. And we continue to get loans from the World Bank, get loans from the IMF, and we pay them. And not only that, countries began to build up their own systems because they have gathered the information that you can build an investment bank and give loans to others, they pay you with interest and you continue to expand the base of your economy at their expense. An Africa that said that it was going to create an African Development Bank shareholding so much so that other countries' shares will be more than what the Africans were paying. That is the problem. The problem is the poverty of the mind. It's not poverty of resources. Which Africa are you struggling to have automatic citizenship of? It does not exist. You have a balkanized Africa, a poor Africa, where you come and you build your family, your house, beautiful, but others will be living in sheds and huts. You think they should welcome you and that they have a grand heart to welcome you. And yes, they do, but they will welcome you to their huts, to one meal a day. And when you see that, you will shed tears instead of laugh and be happy that you are welcome to an Africa, your homeland, your birthplace, your birthright. We have a struggle to age. 
We need a transition. A transition where each individual country, collectively as a continent, meeting to know that the diaspora is a place where Africans enslaved were taken to and they have a right to return. And as the African Union, they must look at each country, their constitutions, all the elements that are essential to agree on a protocol on how to ensure that those who want to return now will be given all the opportunities to be able to do so in any country of their choice. That battle must start, but those people must be conscious that they are returning to a continent where they are ready now to work, to rebuild, so that they can welcome others who would not want to come and live in huts and see an environment that is not fit for purpose. We have a challenge of destiny and we are yet to address that challenge. Join us together in that search for that new Africa that can only be brought about by a new African, conscious that we have a birthright to claim, but a continent to build before that birthright can be meaningful. Thank you.